and the same thing is true in Houston in the training areas there, is that it isn't just the flight, it isn't just the launch of the rocket, it isn't just the astronauts that makes it interesting. If you take an, as uh, an artist through one of the buildings, like the vehicle assembly building, and let them look around, they see all kinds of things that are inspiring, just the enormous size of that building. It's uh, incredible, it's uh, incredible. And in one of the Bay areas that's waiting for a Saturn V to be assembled, is uh, incredible to look up into this, uh, this opening. And as you see here, there are platforms that would come and squeeze around the uh, different stages of the space, uh, of the launch vehicle, and the technicians would work on that, and they'd remove them and roll the thing out to the launch pad. But you have to see the vehicle assembly building to understand and appreciate the size of that, that place. At one time, it was a lot. Really an inspiring, inspiring thing to uh, get involved in. And this, uh, Paul Kelly's painting of the uh, step on the moon, this was done a while after the, uh, after the landing, of course. But uh, as a sidelight, Paul, before the launch, had designed the uh, first lunar landing stamp for the U.S. Postal Service. And the astronauts took die plates with them to the moon. And then when, once the mission was successful and they were coming back, they released the stamp. But so his involvement in this has been uh, longstanding and very deep. But in order to do this painting, he went to the uh, manufacturer of the, uh, of the lunar module. Uh, I think it was out on Long Island at Grumman. And uh, did a lot of photography there and a lot of drawing. And uh, was able to... Uh, uh, accomplished this uh, very large oil painting. And he had it on display someplace, I forget where it was, and uh, Neil Armstrong showed up. And Paul talked with him and right away found a brush and some white paint and got Neil to sign it in that uh, left-hand corner. So that painting is out there somewhere and, uh, and it's uh, an extremely valuable piece of work. But anyway, this brings the, me to an end of the, the part that I was going to, uh, uh, that I was talking about. But one last thing I'd like to say is that what we've, uh, in the NASA art program, what we have now is uh, a record for the future of some of the most important events of the present done in a medium that's as old as history itself, the hand and the eye of the artist. So thank you. Hi there, I'm Bert Ulrich. I work at NASA. Um, first of all, I'm really, it's a real pleasure to be here with this, these panelists here. Um, Jim Dean really started a legacy, I think, for, for, for future generations and really built up a collection. Um, when he left to go to the Air and Space Museum, there was a gentleman there named Robert Schulman at NASA who took over the, the reins of the art program and built up, really rebuilt the art program um, when the shuttle era began. And um, I'm going to show you some images. Oh. You forgot the Mitchell Jameson piece, which is like a monkey and scream, <laughs> but that's another one. <laughs> okay, <laughs> sorry, that was from the yeah, Apollo era. No, I, what? I one. Oh, that's okay. We're good. No, that's all right. There. This is by. Oh, let me go back. Okay. There you go. This was done by Mitchell Jameson, the uh, the artist that I had on the aircraft carrier. And as I as I mentioned before, he was listening to all the reports from NASA about uh, the astronauts on the moon and and what was going on, and then they were, then they finally returned. And, uh, and what he was trying to get at here was, what must it have been like to step out on the moon and to look up at that sky and uh, maybe see stars or not see stars, but to, to look back at the Earth and just uh, look in wonder. And uh, this was the painting that he had done on board the ship, just imagining what that first look would, uh, would be like to, uh, to an astronaut. It's really interesting because it kind of is a juxtaposition to his other piece where he's like this heroic figure and here he's very, very much more fragile. <laughs> um, anyway, so um, Bob Schulman began uh, collecting and commissioning artists, including Michael Carroll, who did a wonderful um, painting of a, on, on a launch pad, um, which, which we have in our collection. Um, this is a, a piece by Jack Perlmutter, um, which was done for the third shuttle mission. And, and you know, it's just a different interpretation, very graphic. And um, he's a, he was a local DC artist here. 
Um, here's a piece by Jim Dean, who, you, who just spoke to you, called Shuttle Flowers, which is really a beautiful piece because it sort of juxtaposes the nature that appears at the Kennedy Space Center. It's on a big wildlife refuge. And it's, it's a really bizarre juxtaposition between the nature that you see at Kennedy and the technology that's involved in launching a shuttle. Um, Robert Rauschenberg uh, did a piece for the first shuttle mission uh, called Hot Shot, where he, and, and it's kind of hard to see, but he has all these sort of references to, to the space culture of Cocoa Beach and mixes them with, and mixes them with pictures of the shuttle and um, just an interesting sort of mix. Um, Henry Caselli, who's a portrait artist, really shows an introspective side to what astronauts are about. It's a very spiritual sort of piece. Um, it's called When Thoughts Turn Inward. This is right before um, um, John Young went up on the first space shuttle mission. And this is really the special thing that the artists get, I think, when they do commissions with NASA, is that they really get a backdoor view. Um, they get to sort of have access that, that, that the public normally doesn't have access to, and they're able to re reinterpret to the public through their imaginations um, what, what they actually see and experience. Um, and this is a very profound piece, I think. Um, more of a more lighter piece is a William Wegman piece that we had commissioned um, called Chip and Batty Explore Space. Those are two of his Weimaraner dogs. Um, we loaned him, um, not a real spacesuit, but one of our public affairs sort of spacesuits that they show at exhibits where people get dressed up in little spacesuits and greet children and, and, and different people. Um, and um, um, so he, he borrowed this suit and sort of stuck the dog in the back of it so it, that he would peer in. The dog is actually not in the suit. And um, he, he took some stereo equipment, what stereo styrofoam boxes from, from, from stereo equipment, and he created a space station and then had the dog sort of appearing from the porthole there. And um, it, was really, it was a really fun piece. Um, a lot of these pieces, including the Wegman piece, are, on, are currently on display in a, uh, on a show that Jim and I both worked on called NASA Art 50 Years of Exploration, which is traveling around the country. It's a sites show. The Smithsonian Institution Traveling Exhibit Service, they put on a show for the 50th anniversary of the agency. And um, it's now in Huntsville, Alabama, I think. And we also worked on a book on that. Um, Andy Leibovitz did a piece with us in 1999 for Eileen Collins, who was the first uh, space shuttle commander and pilot. And um, it's a very powerful piece. Eileen personally didn't like the piece, but um, there was another one of her, which is actually really, really w wonderful, which we didn't get, but we got this one, which is also quite wonderful. Um, Jean Quick to see Smith is a Native American artist that did a piece called Indian Science, where she weaves in, um, uh, she, she's uh, with the Salish, um, tribe and she actually wove in uh, a, a woman's dress and the idea is to bring in the symbolism of, of giving birth to all, all earthly things and how we're all one and, and there's an astronaut and it's the same as a beetle and we're all made of stardust and, and, and sort of a lot of symbolism in there. Um, Bob Schulman also did a piece um, who was the, the curator of the art program or the director of the art program and the, who built up the shuttle program um, pieces. He did a piece called After Touchdown, which is also a very somber piece after the hubbub of the first shuttle landing um, in, in 81. You sort of look reflectively back at what, what, what is involved. It's really the desert. And again, you see this weird juxtaposition between nature and technology, I think, and, and the traces of the, of the shuttle there. Um, Chikaya Booker um, is an artist up in New York who did a piece for the Columbia mission, the one that we lost, uh, STS-107 in 2003, we lost the, uh, the crew of the space shuttle Columbia. And she did a piece which incorporated an actual tire from the Columbia mission, um, from one of the f other missions that came back. And um, so it's interwoven in this rubber piece, which actually looks like a black star and sort of mourns um, the crew. Ziggy Benheim is another artist who did a piece for Columbia um, incorporating all sorts of symbolism um, and really did a lot of research to do that. Um, this is getting more in the aeronautics area. This is a piece on fluid dynamics, the idea of you know, how gases form when solid objects go through them. And um, this is a piece by Tina York. And Barbara Prey did a piece on the X-43, which was the fastest. 2004, it broke the Guinness Book of World Records. I think it almost reached 7,000 miles per hour. And um, you sort of get the idea of the speed and the 